Okay, so this section is uh, I'm going to uh, compare the discussion about the shear band formation and the crazing in the uh, glassy polymers. And this is going back to the, my previous video recordings. I was going to talk to you about the macroscopic uh, stress strain curve and trying to uh, show you the where the yield points and how and so on. But this time I am going to discuss more on to the microscopic behavior. And one is called the shear yielding or shear band. The other is a crazing for the particularly the uh, which is uh, the ultimate uh, property, the fracture of the polymer. And this uh, chapter uh, actually explained this, but there's uh, some information that I want to update it. So this is uh, one that slide that I use for actually job interview when I uh, an interview at RPI in uh, year 1999, right? Okay, so this is a large strain mechanical property, right? Large strain mechanical property, what that means is you want to see that essentially something that related to the fracture mechanics. And we want to have a better idea about molecular perspective. And then there are two mechanisms. Uh, one is uh, what they call the crazing. The other one is a shear band formation, or they also call the shear deformation zone. Okay? And uh, even for the polymer that is in the uh, the glassy polymers. So this, uh, I'm, I'm first section is I'm going to talk about the glassy polymer. They can have actually shear band formation or the crazing, and the crazing is when you. This is a picture of a, of a sample. That when you prepare the something looks like a thin uh, kind of plastic sheet, and you you undergo the tensile uh, deformation if you're stretching out. And they start to form this the film, so forming this networks of the. It's like a, almost like a mesh, right? The cross tie fibrils and a lot of fibrils with the cavitations are being being formed, and this is a characteristic nature of what is called the crazing. And then, then at some point that they start to crack, start to grow out, and then eventually this fill the kind of the what has been formed is uh, this uh, fibrillar uh, crate formation turn into the catastrophic failure at some point. And that's, this is a, a mechanism is called a crazing, and this is a mechanism for brittle polymer. And I think I discussed that briefly in the table format before. And the example is a polystyrene now. is actually elongation mode. Okay. And then, like I said, poly, uh, PS and, um, for example, PMMA elongation, elongation at temperature as lower than 40 degrees C. And <laughs> so this is a tensile elongation model is that. The shear band formation is uh, something that you might have seen that, okay, what we have shown you along when you tensiling it, they start to form this necking regions, and this necking regions start to grow, right? And if you're looking at this uh, formation of the necking, it is actually, if you're looking at from the side view of, of those, they are essentially, when, when this bile example is being stretched out, they are developing something 45 degree angle of succession of 45 degree angle of slip plane. So this is a shear slip plane, okay? This is a slip plane, 45 degree slip plane. And slide plane, that, that they, they slide each other, and overall you are, you are seeing some kind of the net necking of the sample, okay? The reason is because of your what you actually have generated over there is uh, just a cascade of the slip plane for 45 degrees along the uh, the tensile direction. That's uh, essentially a maximum stress plane for tensile, for elongation. And so that's what we call the shear band formation. And then this is a essentially characteristic is no cavitation. 
fibril formation. Right? Just, uh, just, just, just getting thin. Thinner, right? So without having this kind of the regions that is shown. So uh, the shear band formation is. This is a. I can. Uh, here's a, here's a re here's an example. This is uh, from the, our textbook here, and this textbook shows that okay, polystyrene, define, and then what is called a compression was applied. So this is on the compression. So what what has happened here is. This polystyrene was compressed. When you compress this way, you start to see this the plane. Okay, so this is a start to on the slip plane, and and then this is another one that 45 degree slip plane. And then on the cross polarized uh, microscope, uh, this plane is slip plane. There is a where the chains are stretched. When the chains are stretched, they develop the birefringence there. So this is an example of where people can see the uh, slip plane formation. And uh, so therefore, the shear band, which is a ductile polymer fracture, and then this is an example for polystyrene. Polystyrene and the compression. And also, uh, the crazing is uh, in the other way, where you can see this not 45 degrees, when you have a polystyrene now, but now this time, it was doing on the tensile. Okay, so this is a tensile, and this is a polystyrene. So same material, polystyrene, but now what you see here is that you start to see the development of something that you, you see a lot of like uh, lines going through perpendicular. It's not 45 degrees, it's a, it's a perpendicular lines. So this is the same representation as, uh, as i shown up here. When you stretch out a tensile, these lines are being formed. It's going to be formed in here and there. And if you kind of zoom it up uh, to the, the surfaces, now you can see that uh, this, uh, this is a, what they call the craze region. This is a craze region as a where the strains are more localized for the deformation and then this is where the things looks like and here's a, actually a TM uh, pictures of actually the this the, the schematic diagram into more details and you can see that this is a more like a dust even the dust uh, this the crazes are open up you can it can reveal the more details of this but you can see that a lot of cross tie fibrils are going through these uh, polymers this one is particularly the the poly this kind of polymer is a hydrogenated polystyrene polycyclohexyl ethylene homopolymer and that's that's a region that uh, TM microscope uh, to show this the craze uh, development in, in the real experiment. Okay, so this is a craze. Okay, so uh, here is actually the textbook uh, pictures. Here you can see this that, that uh, this is a transmission electron microscope, and this is actually done by the Dr. Ed Kramer. And the previous this picture is also was was with uh, with uh, Dr. Ed Kramer. I did my postdoc with him. And uh, you can see that that's also the craze. And you can see that this is a craze tip. Okay, so that's, that's what, what this is about. And if I look at the, the pictures in the textbook of the Tim Lodge's textbook, and then uh, uh, you will see that uh, this is more like a schematic diagram. It is quite quite well observed. And so this is a more like a, a, a crazed a crazed formation. And this is a, the, the schematic diagram of the crazed tip, with a void is still being formed uh, at near the crazed tip, and how this one is developed more mature structures. <laughs> okay. So the now the one thing one thing to to go go with this is uh, the crazing is the nature of the brittle polymer fractures, whereas if you go here, 
and the shear bands, and that's the signature of the ductile polymer. Obviously, here is an example of I give, give you the polystyrene compression. Most also common one that people have shown is a polycarbonate. And the tension mold. Okay, so if you have a polycarbonate during the tension, you can see that development of the slipping plane that is the 45. So a lot of slipping plane that you see. Eventually, this slipping plane turns out to be the development of localization is a development to the necking of the polycarbonate. And that is a signature of uh, some, some material that is ductile slash tough. Okay? <laughs> So that's a, that's a two different molecular mechanism. Okay.